So we'll just go ahead and get started with today's webinar. Uh, welcome everybody. This is our last Giving Tuesday webinar and we're going to be covering last minute campaign prep. And my name is Linda Gerhardt. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. Um, this is my third Giving Tuesday with Mighty Cause. So um, I've been around to help nonprofits get ready for their campaigns and I'm happy to share some tips that I've picked up over the years um, that helps nonprofits get together successful campaigns in a short period of time. All right, and so here is a look at today's agenda. What I'm hoping to do with this webinar is to break down campaign prep into six easy steps, um, six easy actionable steps for you so that you can sign off this webinar today with some action items to complete and pick up at whichever step your nonprofit is currently on. Um, these are the six steps and there are some key action items within each step that you'll want to complete to get ready for this year's Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, we also have a handout with actual an actual physical checklist that you can print out and go over with your team um, to make sure that you complete all the action items we discuss on this webinar. You should be able to download that in the handout section of your GoToWebinar panel. And it is there in uh, both PDF format and Microsoft Word format. So depending on what your preferences are, you can download the checklist and then after the webinar, go in and actually fill out the checklist. And just as a note to keep things rolling along since everybody's anxious to get started on their Giving Tuesday campaign, I will be taking questions at the end of the presentation. So if you think of something you want to ask while I'm presenting, just type it into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel and I will make sure to make some time to get to it at the end of the presentation. And before we really get rolling, I just wanted to quickly go over some of the basics on Mighty Cause so that as we dive in, everybody's on the same page and knows the basic structure of how Giving Tuesday works. Giving Tuesday is a global day of giving, um, but Mighty Cause hosts our own event on Giving Tuesday. So when we're talking about Giving Tuesday on this webinar, I just wanna be clear that we're talking about the event on Mighty Cause, which happens on the global day of giving. Um, this are, is our last training webinar before the big day, as I mentioned, but we do have lots of resources available to help you get ready, as well as recordings of any previous Giving Tuesday webinars that you may have missed on the Giving Tuesday site. And we'll talk a little bit more more about that later on. Uh, we're offering prizes to nonprofits who participate in Giving Tuesday on our site. And this year we're giving away more than $10,000 in prizes. And there's lots of chances to win. Um, we're also offering free fundraising for your nonprofit. And in the interest of total transparency, this is how that works. On Mighty Cause, your donors have the option to cover fees for your nonprofit when they donate. And on Giving Tuesday, they will still have this option. Um, most donors do actually choose to cover platform fees when they're asked, which is really cool. But on this particular day, if donors don't opt to cover platform fees for you, we'll take care of it. So your nonprofit will not see any platform fees deducted from your disbursement. You will, however, still see credit card profit processing fees because Mighty Cause doesn't keep that money and unfortunately we're not able to waive those fees for you. Um, and you'll be able to see a breakdown of all of this on your donation report and your disbursement report. And just as another note, when donations open, this pricing structure goes into effect. And lastly, once you're registered, you have a, pre a free preview of our premium fundraising tools. Um, I won't be going too far into how you can utilize them today, since today we're all about quick wins and getting your ducks in a row, but we do have a blog post about how to utilize our premium tools for Giving Tuesday on our blog, which is blog.mightycause.com. If you have the time to take a look there and you wanna see how you can use some of the premium tools to bolster your Giving Tuesday campaign. And here are the important dates for Giving Tuesday. At this point, there are only two important dates left. First is November 13th, which is next Tuesday, if you can believe that. And that's the date early donations open for Giving Tuesday. So starting on Tuesday, November 13th, all donations made to your Mighty Cause page will count toward your Giving your Giving Tuesday totals. Um, these are donations that process immediately. They're not pledges that are scheduled in advance. So that's important to communicate to your donors. Um, this just allows them to make their donations early and it allows you to get some seed donations and get a jump start on the competition by raising money before November 27th. And Giving Tuesday is November 27th. And just to be clear, that is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, 
after Black Friday, after Cyber Monday. And just as another note, our Giving Tuesday event on Mighty Cause goes from midnight Eastern time to midnight Pacific time. So it's actually a 27 hour event. And that's so no one gets a raw deal because of the time zone they happen to operate in. And everyone has an equal amount of time to fundraise and equal opportunities to win prizes. And that brings us to prizes. Um, there are basically three ways to win on Giving Tuesday. Um, the first way to win is through the leaderboards. This year, there are three leaderboards, one for small nonprofits and one for large nonprofits. So we only have you competing against nonprofits of a similar size. These leaderboards rank nonprofits by the amount of money they raise, and first place gets $1,000 and second place gets $250. You also have golden tickets, which are random prizes. And how golden tickets work is that our system will randomly pull a donation made in the previous hour, and the nonprofit that donation was made to wins a $100 cash prize. So the strategy here is just to keep donations coming in throughout the day. And this is a big source of prizes this year, um, these competitive power hours, where the nonprofit that raises either the most money or brings in the largest number of individual donors wins a prize. The full schedule of these prizes and power hours is on the Giving Tuesday site under prizes. And since these require some strategy, I recommend taking a look at the prizes page and understanding the schedule so that you can play to win. All right, so now we're going to move into the main meat of this presentation. And the first step to register to being ready for Giving Tuesday is registering. So if you haven't already registered, go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com and click on the big blue button that says register to start the process. It's right here. You can see I've made a little pink arrow. So if you're not sure where to go, just go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com and click the button that says register. If you're already an admin for your nonprofit on Mighty Cause, this form is super easy to complete um, because it'll pull information from your Mighty Cause account. So you'll see your nonprofit listed if you're an admin and you just need to click on it and then answer two questions and then click submit. Now, if you're not an admin, this is an ex there is an extra step, which is just finding your nonprofit from our search tool where you can use your EIN or your nonprofit's name just to find your nonprofit so we know which nonprofit you're registering for the event. If you have a name that a lot of other nonprofits have in common, like Humane Society or Food Pantry or Red Cross or something like that, I highly recommend using your EIN to find your nonprofit since it's kind of impossible to make a mistake and accidentally choose another nonprofit with a similar EIN. That's an exact search. So if your EIN is not there, there are some steps listed. You can click that little link that says create organization, but that'll make it easier to make sure that you are registering the correct organization if you have a name that's pretty similar to other nonprofits in the country. Um, registrations are approved at lightning speed, and you'll hear from us within 24 hours, usually sooner. And again, once you choose your organization, it is literally just two questions. So honestly, it could not be more simple or easy to get registered. And I really don't want to stress anyone out or add to your stress or freak you out, but I just want to reiterate that donations open next Tuesday. So it's really important to take care of registering before you do anything else we talk about in this webinar. If you wanted to open up your browser while you're watching and listening and take a minute to register now while we're talking about it, I promise my feelings won't be hurt. So please, if you're not registered, don't hesitate to multitask and go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com and get registered while you're listening to this webinar. So once you're registered, the next step is getting your Mighty Cause profile ready. And in the next few slides, I'm going to break down the most important and necessary things to do to make sure that you're ready for Giving Tuesday. First up on this slide, we have a quick checklist and you can also find a more detailed checklist in the handout. So you can refer back to it and make sure all of these things are done. Um, to get your page ready, you'll want to make sure you've added a logo and that your logo is current. So if you added a logo three years ago, but it's changed since then, um, you may want to update that because it represents you throughout Mighty Cause. It represents you on the leaderboard, in the search, basically everywhere on our platform. So your logo is a really key part of your page. 
You'll also want to add a banner image. Um, and just so you know, we do have a library of gen generic banners if you want to use one of them. But it's always great to add a custom banner since it's one of the first things people will see when they go to your profile to make a donation. And then you should update your about section. Um, check it for any old or outdated information and include some information about what your nonprofit is doing in 2018 and even 2019 and your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, you can add photos, embed videos, add formatting like lists and headers. So make sure that your about section looks really sharp and is easy to read. People don't like to read walls of text. So please make sure you break that up with either lists or images or videos just to make it easier for people to read on. Um, and you'll also want to make sure that you have your donor experience settings chosen um, and have your thank you page set up and have suggested donation, donation amounts added and have reset your metrics. And we're gonna go into detail about all of that in the next few slides. Okay, so first I wanna talk about donor experience because this is a new feature. Um, we just released it over the summer. And what this is, is basically a tool you can use to customize the checkout experience for your donors, um, which is obviously important because donations are the centerpiece of Giving Tuesday. So you wanna make sure that that experience is optimized. It gives you a lot of control and it's worth taking some time to check out the settings here and customize it so that your donors have the experience you want them to have. Um, first, you can see how many steps are in your checkout process and preview the whole experience from beginning to end. And one cool thing um, is that you can have, you can give donors the option of adding a dedication or, a desig or designating their donation for a specific fund or program, um, which is something that Mighty Cause users have been asking for for a long time. Um, but when we finally added it, it's under donor experience, which is in the donations tab of your Mighty Cause manager or your dashboard. So you click the dollar sign and then click on donor experience and you'll be dropped into this tool. Um, so for designations, you determine the possible ways donors can designate their donation so they can't just make something up. If you have a, a fund or a restricted fund or a special fund or a program that you would like to have funding for on Mighty Cause, you can make that one of the options if a donor would like to designate their donation. And if you have a program at your nonprofit to acknowledge donations that were made on behalf of somebody else or in honor of somebody else or in memory of someone who passed away, um, you definitely want to make use of this feature because donors love it. It's a great way for them to honor somebody and also gives you a great way to um, honor their donation. Um, this is also where you can choose what data to collect from your donors. So for instance, if you really want mailing addresses so you can get people signed up for your direct mail or calling people to thank them is really important to your nonprofit, you can opt into address collection or collecting phone numbers in your donor experience tool. Um, by default, we just collect email addresses. So if you need more than that at your nonprofit, go to donor experience and opt into collecting the information you need. Just keep in mind that each piece of information you collect adds a step to the process for donors. So it's a good idea to pare this down to must have information and leave off any information that would just be nice to have in the interest of keeping the donation process quick and easy. Because as we all know, the more complicated the process of donating is, the more likely it is that donors will opt out of it. So that's why it's important to preview the process once you've chosen your options, which you can also do through the donor experience tool. Um, the other thing you can do here is add suggested donation amounts. Um, by default, you have Mighty Causes default options, which are $25, $50, $75, and $100 with no description on the button. But you can customize these amounts and add descriptions of what those amounts provide for your nonprofit. And you can also add your thank you page and add a custom message to the receipt we'll send donors to automate your donor acknowledgement. So what you really wanna take some time to do is optimize this process. And there are some best practices that we wanted to go over. Um, for suggested donation amounts, you are limited to four, um, plus the button where donors can enter a custom amount. And it's important to be thoughtful about these amounts. Um, if possible, tying them back to a real world item or service that amount helps you provide is recommended because we've seen on Mighty Cause that it works. It's important to donors. 
Um, people love to make in-kind donations, as most of us know. And being smart about your suggested donation amounts and your descriptions can really give them that fulfilling experience of donating an item or a service to the demographic that your nonprofit serves. So for instance, if you're an animal shelter or an animal rescue and $50 gets one dog neutered and $25 pays for one rabies vaccine just to pull numbers out of the air, um, those are great amounts and descriptions to add because the donor can say, oh, instead of just donating $25, I provided a rabies vaccine to an animal in need. Food banks, for instance, have used this psychology to really great effect by tying donation amounts back to providing a certain number of meals for the people they serve. So you can get creative here, dig into some numbers um, if you need to, but this is really a way to bump donors up to donating at levels that you want them to donate at. Um, but that said, you'll want to make sure that you have some entry-level donation amounts listed. Um, even though this is a powerful tool and a powerful way to connect with donors, it's very unlikely that the average donor is going to see your suggestion that they donate $500 and decide that instead of giving $20, they'll give $500 because that's just not how people donate to charity. Um, and when you start off suggesting $100 or even thousands of dollars, which I have actually seen nonprofits do, um, you can actually drive them away because donors who have left to get less to give can feel like the $25 they do have doesn't matter. So they may opt out of the process of giving altogether. So be thoughtful here and be sure to include donors at all levels. Also, keep your descriptions clear and to the point you are limited to 60 characters because of space constraints within the buttons. Um, basically, if you try to put a novel there, the button is going to cease to be a button and be more of a weird column. Um, so we've had to limit the amount of text you can put in that space. Um, so you're forced to be concise, but just write something in clear, plain English that explains why you're suggesting that amount and what it provides. And finally, when you're all done, I cannot stress enough that you preview the process. When you're adding things one by one, you can easily end up with a really time consuming and cumbersome process. So click the button in donor experience that allows you to preview the checkout process and go through the whole thing. Pay attention to how long it takes you, whether there were any steps that felt unnecessary or particularly time consuming, and use that to edit yourself and to optimize the process. Okay, so moving on to the post-checkout options, which are also in donor experience, you can just toggle to post-checkout. Um, you can now add a thank you page. And that means that right after donors complete their donation, they'll be dropped onto a page you can create in your donor experience tool. It's right there under post-checkout, which you can just toggle to, as I mentioned. It uses the same inline text editor as your about section on your page, meaning that you can em embed a video, add images, add formatting, add hyperlinks. Um, just a note about videos, Mighty Cause does not host videos. That's not really what our platform is designed to do. So you'll just need to upload any videos you want to include to YouTube or Vimeo first, making sure that the video is public because if it's not public, we can't actually show it on our page. Um, this page is important to set up because it'll mean that your donor is thanked immediately and you have the chance to quickly and sincerely thank them for their contribution. Statistically, the speed at which you thank donors is very important to whether they choose to donate to your nonprofit again. So this is one way you can automate that process and keep them engaged after they make their donation. Also on the post checkout tab is the ability to add a custom message to your donor's receipt, which is emailed to them immediately by Mighty Cause after they complete their donation. So the receipt comes from Mighty Cause, um, but you have the option to add in a message to your donors just to give them an additional thank you for their contribution. Um, you can add text formatting, emojis, links, and so on. Um, one thing that I do want to clarify is that at this point, you cannot embed videos. Um, you should use your thank you, pa thank you page to share videos. Um, and you did used to be able to include a video link here, but I just want to make it clear that it was a link to the video, not actually embedding a video, since most email service providers don't allow users to watch videos and emails. So it's better to add it to your thank you page and just use this space to thank your donors for helping you out on Giving Tuesday and use some language um, to get them engaged in your cause and thank them for contributing. 
Another cool new feature this year is the ability to add a goal and progress bar to your nonprofit's profile. Um, you used to have to create a fundraiser page to utilize a progress bar and a financial goal, but now it can be easily added to your org page. You can find this option under your page settings and metrics. Um, so on your dashboard, you want to go to profile and then click page settings to see your metrics. <coughs> Pardon me. And here's where you can share your fundraising goal for Giving Tuesday and track your progress. And you can customize how you want it calculated. Um, you can choose to include or exclude offline donations um, and whether to show a donor account. Um, this is also where you'll reset your metrics. So in this section, just change the date to next Tuesday, November 13th. And that way your progress bar won't include any donations that did not count for Giving Tuesday. By default, we will count all donations on your page since your page was created in our on our platform, but you can easily change that under the metrics section, section in your page settings. Um, it's easy to toggle on and off, so when your campaign is finished, you can just go back to your page settings and toggle off the progress bar or just reset it for your end of year campaign. And the last thing you'll want to do to get your page ready is review your nonprofit settings. Um, you can add anyone who needs admin, admin access to your page through your settings. Um, so if you need to give access to your accountants so they can export your donation report, just make sure they're added. You can customize your URL if you want from your settings as well. Uh, make sure your discoverability is turned on so we can show you in searches on Mighty Cause. If you've turned off your discoverability, that means that your organization will not be in searches and can only be accessed with a direct link. So it's really important to turn that on for Giving Tuesday. And you can customize your social sharing settings so that when you or someone else shares your page on social media, it's optimized for that platform looks great and has the messaging that you want. Otherwise, it'll just automatically pull from sections of your page. So you have the opportunity to customize it and control the messaging there. So I definitely advise taking advantage of that. Um, we also highly recommend setting up EFT so you can get your disbursements through direct deposit. You can upload the information and documentation right through your settings so it's super easy and you'll get the money you raise on Giving Tuesday more quickly and you'll also get it more frequently. And finally, check your legal info to make sure it's current. Donors do look at this. So if there have been any changes to your nonprofit's name or address, you can make those changes and upload the documentation through your settings. Um, those do have to be reviewed and approved by Mighty Causes staff before they can be implemented on your page, um, but you can take care of that in your settings. So if you have changes you want to make, get them uploaded as soon as possible so our staff can review them and make sure that they are on your page for Giving Tuesday. All right, so when your Mighty Cause profile is in tip-top shape, you can move on to the next step, which is utilizing Mighty Cause's nonprofit resources to get your campaign ready. Mighty Cause has put together a nonprofit toolkit for you, and you can access it by going to givingtuesday.mightycause.com, going to resources, and then just clicking nonprofit resources. This toolkit is your friend. So make sure you take the time to figure out where it is and review it. Um, if something is not relevant to you, you don't have to read it, but there is a lot of information that you will probably want here. So I definitely recommend taking the time to review this, see what's of interest to you, and and make use of these resources that we've taken the time to put together for you. So the toolkit actually has quite a bit in it. If you need a how-to or a walkthrough, you can find that here. You can also review case studies of successful Giving Tuesday fundraisers for inspiration and to get ideas for fundraising techniques and different tactics you can try. We've got our checklist for success and our planning guide in the toolkit. So definitely if you're just getting your campaign together, those are great resources that go a little bit more in depth than the checklist that I've provided for you. Um, so I definitely recommend and checking those out. Um, we've also got email templates, our social media guide, logos and graphics you can use, and a whole ebook of Giving Tuesday content that you can peruse at your leisure. 
um, which I actually helped write. And it's a great in-depth resource. So if you have the time to review that and you want more information about a particular topic, this is the place to find it. Um, so basically, if you are looking for more, if you want to know more about email, if you want to know more about social media, this is the place to find it. Um, this is sort of a webinar that's big picture. Um, so if you want to get into the nitty gritty of any topic, just find it in the toolkit because we've, took, take a, we've taken a lot of time and effort to put this together for you. And it's a really great resource that's totally free for, for you to use. Um, again, as I mentioned, this is our last Giving Tuesday webinar, and we're keeping it focused on quick, quick wins and high-level campaign prep. But if you want to go back and watch our past webinars, they're where you'd find the deep dives into subjects like matching grants and social media and so on. Um, they're free and accessible to you at all times, so you can watch them whenever you'd like, and even fast forward through any parts that are not of interest to you. Um, so if your time is really limited, you can also delegate watching them to your staff or volunteers. So for instance, the Matching Grants webinar, if you have a development, development coordinator you want to assign to handle matching grants, you can have them watch that webinar and maybe give you any notes from the webinar. If you have a volunteer who's handling your social media for the day of, you can have them watch the social media webinar and so on. Um, again, we spent a lot of time putting this content together for you, so we really recommend making use of it. It's free, you've got access to it now, and if you want to make sure you do a better job with social media or matching grants or email marketing, um, you can utilize the tips in this content to really optimize your performance on Giving Tuesday. Um, you can parse through and just find what you're interested in, use them for inspiration, and hopefully utilize our resources to make your campaign stronger. So the next step is to just start scheduling content for Giving Tuesday. And again, we're gonna keep this brief, but um, not to sound like a broken record, but you can always check out our email templates and best practices in the nonprofit toolkit for an in-depth discussion of email strategy and just to get some in inspiration. If you find yourself with a little bit of writer's block, sometimes reading a template can sort of help you figure out where to go with writing an email. But overall, you should plan out your email strategy and one thing we recommend doing over and over again is segmenting your email list so you can make specific appeals to key groups of supporters, such as volunteers, people who gave to previous Giving Tuesday campaigns or end of year campaigns, people who gave to your last fundraising campaign. So if you did a campaign in the spring, make sure that you include those donors and make a specific appeal to them your board members, and so on. Um, you should also be sure to include your Giving Tuesday campaign in any routine emails you send before the event, um, like your e-newsletter. You can even include it in transactional emails. Um, so if you're sending receipts to donors or you're um, sending them any sort of invite to an event that you're having before Giving Tuesday, just mention your Giving Tuesday campaign. That repetition can really be helpful. Um, and I cannot em emphasize this last point enough test your emails before they send. Look at them in different browsers on mobile devices and make sure your links are working, um, that you don't have any typos or grammatical errors and so on. Um, you shouldn't be sending emails without testing them, so please be sure to draft them in advance. Send them to your team to review. Um, my rule of thumb is that two people other than yourself should look over an email before it sends to your supporters. Um, and make sure they're solid before you send them out. It's a high stakes day. It's one of the biggest fundraising days of the nonprofit calendar. So definitely take that time to spend the next week or so reviewing emails and making sure that you're putting your best foot forward because you have a captive audience with your email list to some degree, much more so than social media. So you wanna make sure that you do your best to optimize optimize those emails and get the most you can out of them. All right, so social media is another important aspect of Giving Tuesday. It's really kind of at the heart of Giving Tuesday. I mean, the name of it is a hashtag. Um, so Giving Tuesday is all about social media. And I hosted a webinar on social media for Giving Tuesday last month um, that goes really in depth about the different platforms and different tricks you can use to be seen. Um, so you can watch that in the nonprofit toolkit. And I also wrote our social media guide. So for in-depth strategy discussion and best practices, please check that out in the nonprofit toolkit. But my biggest tip to you is to schedule as much as you can in advance using the tools available to you, like TweetDeck and Facebook's publishing tools. And to be sure to look at the prize structure so you can aim to win power hours 
and utilize social media to drive donations at strategic times. Um, you should save any live posting on Giving Tuesday for celebrating fundraising milestones and thanking your donors and giving updates on your progress. Okay, so next up, once you've got all of these pieces in place, you'll wanna come up with a day of plan. To have a smooth day on Giving Tuesday and make sure that nothing slips between the cracks and gets missed, um, I recommend assigning a point person to key areas of your campaign, such as social media, donor communications, and monitoring your progress. Um, have a meeting with your team before the 27th, um, I would say as soon as possible. So if you have people in the office tomorrow or Friday, get them together, brainstorm ideas, just meet with your team team, um, go over your campaign strategy, and make sure that everyone understands your goals and how you're planning on getting there. Um, if you're a small operation, now's a great time to start looping in volunteers so you can get the coverage that you need for Giving Tuesday so that you're not running around stressed out. It should be a fun and positive day, and having a point person in charge of key areas and getting your ducks together and getting your team together to discuss it before Giving Tuesday is a great way to make sure that it's not a stressful day. So here are some tips for having a fun, successful day. Um, first, celebrate milestones with your supporters and with your team. Um, post on social media, send out a few email updates to your donors, and let your staff know about your successes. Um, keep your eye on the prizes, and check the Giving Tuesday site to see if you've won a golden ticket or a power hour, and be sure to celebrate that as well. Um, Giving Tuesday is all about online engagement. So look for opportunities to engage with your supporters on social media. Be responsive to their comments, retweet them or tweet at them if you are using Twitter, um, respond to messages, and have someone available to answer emails and phone calls from donors as well. Um, at Mighty Cause, we provide support to you and your donors, but in a lot of cases, they're trying to get in touch with you first because they know you um, and may not think to contact Mighty Cause, so make sure that you have someone available to answer any questions that come in. If somebody's having problems making a donation, you can refer them to us, but just be available to your donors on the day of Giving Tuesday. Um, and then get in on the bigger conversation around Giving Tuesday by using the Giving Tuesday hashtag. Once again, the name of the event is a hashtag, so if you are posting on social media about it, make sure you add that hashtag to the front of it. And use Mighty Tuesday um, to denote to your followers and to allow us to know that you are um, participating in our event on Mighty Cause. All right, so we're just about to wrap up. Um, the final step to prepping your Giving Tuesday campaign is coming up with a plan to follow up with your donors. So the reason that this is important and the reason why this should be part of your campaign planning process is that it's important to follow up quickly, quick, quickly and thoughtfully, sorry about that, and to make a plan for this so, because studies show that um, how promptly and sincerely you thank your donors is an important factor in whether they decide to donate to your nonprofit again in the future. So it's almost the end of the year, it's almost the most high stakes month in the nonprofit fundraising calendar, and you wanna make sure that you're thanking and acknowledging your donors. It, there's no way you can thank them too much. So this is important to include in your prep for Giving Tuesday. Um, if a donor's experience is not a good one or they get thanked way after the fact, they're much less likely to come and support you again, which is obviously not what you want. Um, a big part of what makes donating satisfying is when you close the loop on your campaign. So plan to report back to your donors about what you raised, how you plan to use the funds, um, and this is a key part of getting them engaged in your nonprofit's work. Um, think about where you want them to go next. Get them signed up for your email list. Get them signed up for your direct mail list if you do direct mail marketing. Send them updates on anything related to your campaign and so on. The biggest mistake you can make with a day like Giving Tuesday is not following up and not having a plan for you want, where you want these donors to go next and how you plan to usher them there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Giving Tuesday is also the kickoff of year-end fundraising, so when you're following up, you can start laying the groundwork for your end-of-year fundraising campaign. Um, that's a whole different webinar, but don't let communications stop at Giving Tuesday. Have a plan for moving them down the pipeline and getting them invested in your work and your next campaign, 
even if you don't have the specifics of your year-end campaign planned out, just start laying that groundwork in your communications with donors. So any new donors you start pick, picking up on Giving Tuesday are a top priority because you don't want to lose them. Um, some things you can do to welcome them to your nonprofit are lining up a welcome series of emails so that they can learn more about your work and what you do. Um, if you collected phone numbers, a nice phone call from a volunteer or development coordinator can go a really long way. You can find out how they found out about you, what their interests are, and start building a personal relationship with them and start stewarding them. You should also plan to reach out to your sustaining supporters. Um, those are the people that you can count on to show up for your nonprofit, whether it's through email, phone calls, or a signed thank you card from your executive director or staff. Um, and if you had a large donation or a matching grant, take some extra time and make an additional effort to personally thank them for their support. For major gift donors, it's all about building that personal relationship. So things like inviting them to a lunch or for a meeting in your office to thank them are great ways to nurture that relationship and steward these major donors. All right, so I feel like this has been a rapid fire webinar, but I just wanted to um, open up the floor to any questions. Um, so I'll give you guys a minute to ask any questions you might have in the GoToWebinar panel. <laughs> and just as a reminder, download your um, handout so that you have the checklist to hang on to. Um, all right, so let me see what questions we have. Um, so yes, um, we will be sending out the slide deck and we'll be sending out the recording um, for this webinar. So you can have that, you can send it to any staff members or volunteers you want to have watch it. Um, so yeah, we'll be sending this out very soon. Um, can more than one person be an admin on an organization's profile? Yes, absolutely. You can have, I think the limit is 10 admins. Um, so you can add 10 people to have access to your page. Um, you can also remove admins from your settings page. So if you have you know, an old bookkeeper that was with you in 2005 and you wanna remove them, you can easily just delete them from your admins to make room for new ones. Um, what's the difference between a banner and a header logo? Okay, so on your Mighty Cause page, let me just see if I can find that slide. Going back. All right, so um, on your Mighty Cause page, this this picture in the back, the you know clouds and the woman with the triumphant arms, that is your banner image. Your logo is the thing that says Mighty Cause Foundation or whatever your logo says. So your logo is front and center and your banner image is kind of in the background of your page, but it is one of the first things that people see. Um, so this is typically, you can crop this right in Mighty Cause. You don't need to know a specific size. You just need to choose a photo that you like. Um, if you don't have a photo that you particularly want to use, there are sites like Unsplash and Pexels um, where you can get free stock photos that work really well in this space, or you can just use the, uh, the library that we have and choose one that you like for the design of your page. But your logo, this um, logo right here that has the hands with the heart, for the Mighty Cause Foundation, that would be what you see throughout the site on the leaderboards in a search. And the banner image is kind of in the background um, and it just kind of adds to the design of your page. Um, just on the background and the banner image, a few best practices are that text doesn't really work here because Mighty Cause is mobile responsive. So sometimes when you add in things with text overlays, it can look really busy and can kind of look funky on different devices because this, the page basically adjusts to the size of the screen it's being viewed on. So um, that's your banner image. If you have any questions, you can certainly email me after the webinar. My email is lynda at mightycause.com and our support staff is also available to help you. Um, but yeah, that's it just in the background, like right behind your logo. That's what that banner image is. So let me get back to the questions page. All right. So the next question is about fees. Um, so fees, basically the fee structure for Giving Tuesday kicks in on the 13th when donations open. So yes, um, at that point, platform fees, would it would be free to your nonprofit. And just to be clear, clear about how that works, your donors will be asked to cover fees for you. And if they choose not to, then 
will take care of it for you. Um, but your donors will see that, but that pricing structure kicks in when donations open midnight Easter time, Eastern time on the 13th. So as soon as donations open, that is in place. You won't have any different pricing to worry about as soon as Giving Tuesday donations start on Tuesday, you'll see that pricing structure in place. Okay, so this is a um, an interesting question about a school that would like to have a campaign for each of their 11 classes. Um, and should they make volunteers administrators or have them create their own campaigns for us using the same content? You could, I would not recommend um, adding them as administrators just because that might be confusing for them. They might try to make changes to your Mighty Cause page. And obviously you wanna protect your donor information. So um, that when you make someone an administrator, that is what it looks like. They can access your donations reports, your disbursement reports, your financial information. So you wanna be careful about who you add as an administrator. Um, for that kind of campaign, what I would recommend is either looking into the Teams product. Um, Teams can be used for Giving Tuesday. Um, and basically what that will give you the opportunity to do is organize a peer-to-peer -peer campaign. And you can even have your own leaderboard within Giving Tuesday where people can easily access different pages for your school. Um, and they're sort of competing against each other on that leaderboard. So it creates an additional layer of gamification. So that could be a good solution. The other cool thing about Teams is that when you create a team, um, they could create one page for if you're doing it by grade or by, you know, Miss Davidson's class, they can have their own page. And you can also create a template for them so that certain parts of their page is filled out for them that they can opt to use. It gets them published a lot e more easily. Um, but if you don't want to use Teams, um, and you can go to mightycause.com slash Teams to sort of find out more about Teams and see what team pages look like. I would recommend having them set up a fundraiser page that's connected to your school's nonprofit um, where they can fundraise for their class. Um, what a team campaign would do would be to central, have a central location where people can easily access those pages and you can see them all at once and have a, a, a goal for your entire school and all of the classes that are participating. Um, but you can also just have them create a fundraiser all they have to do is sign up for a Mighty Cause account and click fundraise on your Mighty Cause page. And they'll have control over that page. They'll be able to see donations made to that page. But that way you're protecting your donor information and your financial information and preventing any volunteers from maybe getting confused and trying to edit your nonprofit profile. Um, and if you have any questions about that or you need help walking through the different options there, you can certainly email me after the webinar or get in touch with our support team, support at Mighty Cause cause.com um, because we're happy to, to walk you through that if you need a little bit of additional assistance. Um, to learn how to schedule, um, this question is about scheduling emails and social media um, in advance. So uh, for emails, you would need to be using email marketing software like MailChimp or Constant Contact. Um, basically, you can draft an email, get it all ready to go, schedule it to fire at a particular time and date. So that would be how you would do that for email. For um, scheduling social media posts, um, if you have a Facebook page, um, you just go into your Facebook page. If you're an admin, you do need to be an admin or at least an editor for in your Facebook page. Um, but you go to publishing tools and you just choose, you go to scheduled posts and then you can create your post there and schedule it for whenever you want. Um, on Twitter, if you use Twitter, um, TweetDeck is um, the tool that you would use to schedule them in advance. And that's TweetDeck dot twitter dot com um, it's a twitter product so you just need to sign into your twitter account um, and instead of clicking post you just want to ch choose to schedule it you can choose whatever date and time you want to schedule a particular tweet um, the only thing that gets a little bit funny is scheduling videos um, tweet deck doesn't really seem to allow that or like that so that might be one challenge you face um, using TweetDeck um, and Instagram unfortunately does not have a program where you can schedule posts ahead of time so if you're planning on using Instagram unfortunately you will have to uh, post those at uh, you'll have to post those live unfortunately all right so this is a question about um, suggested donation amounts um, 
how do you add an additional suggested donation? I have three, I want to add one more. The default on Mighty Cause is four. So we have four spaces that we're looking for you to fill out and then you have the custom button where donors can say, I wanna donate a weird number or a number that's not listed here. Um, so you wanna have four, um, you'll go into your You'll go into your Mighty Cause page, go to your dashboard, click the donations button, that's the little dollar sign, and then go to donor experience. And you scroll down just a little bit and you can turn on suggested donations. You can either turn these on or off. So if you'd prefer to use Mighty Cause's suggestions, you can turn it off, but you'll just need to turn it on if you wanna make them customize, and then just add the amounts and the descriptions that you want right there. Um, so that's a little bit hard to explain rather than show you. So um, just email us at support or email me if you need some additional assistance, but that is located in your donor experience tool, which is in the donation section of your dashboard. Um, okay, so for follow-up, is it best to do an email and then send a letter? Yes. Um, so you want to basically email is great for getting that quick thank you, um, you know, thanking them immediately. They're going to get their receipt from Mighty Cause, getting another email from you personally thanking them, or even just an automated email that's tailored from you to your Giving Tuesday donors is also a great follow up. But you don't have to stop there. Having that additional contact with them, lots of people love getting mail. So having a card that you send out or a letter that you send out is another way to thank them. It's not possible to thank your donors too much. I just want to make that clear. You don't have to worry about thanking them too much. It's not a thing that exists. You can always thank them in different ways, shapes, and forms. So sending a letter is a great idea. The only thing that I will say to be careful about is making sure that it's not a receipt because they receive their receipt from Mighty Cause. Um, so the IRS kind of frowns on double receipting. So um, they've got their tax receipt. You don't have to worry about that. That's done through us, it's automated. That's why the, the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation exists so that we can take care of receiving and issuing statements to donors. Um, so sending a letter or sending a card is a really great way to follow up with donors. Just be careful about double receipting. Um, but as long as you don't present it as a receipt, if it's a letter welcoming them to your organization or just thanking them for their donation, absolutely, that's a great idea. Email is great for quick communications with donors, but definitely other methods like sending them something in the mail or calling them on the phone or even inviting them to an event and making that contact in person is really important to making those long lasting connections. All right, we've got a lot of questions. Um, so let's see. Um, do you have a sample organization with the completed six steps? Um, so not really because we're kind of pulling in um, different areas um, so like that would be a sample mighty cause page sample facebook page sample twitter account etc so there's not really one place where all of them are complete um, so you'll just want to go through the checklist if something doesn't apply to you if you don't use twitter and you don't want to schedule anything there then don't listen to that um, but you can look at um, some Mighty Cause pages that are filled out. Um, the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation page um, is completely filled out, so you can take a look at that. Um, and you can it's always a good idea to see what other people are doing. So what you can do on Mighty Cause is you can actually go um, to the tab that says Explore and just click Nonprofit organizations and you can look at other people's pages and just see what they're doing, what their stories look like, what their banners look like. Um, there's an organization called Homeward Trails that is a heavy Mighty Cause user um, and they have a really fantastic page set up. They have lots of connected fundraisers and they have completed all of the steps um, that they need to to complete their page. So Homeward Trails is a great one to take a look at. Capital Area Food Bank is another heavy hitter on Mighty Cause and their page is really wonderful. So those are just two examples. Um, but it's always, if you have the time, um, go to the Explore tab and just look at other people's nonprofit pages and see what they're doing. It doesn't hurt to do that. And you can get some ideas, you get some inspiration to fill out your page. Okay, so there's some questions about the fees. Um, are the platform fees waived between 11.13, 11.30, and 11.27, or are they waived prior to the 11, to next Tuesday and after Giving Tuesday? Um, so at this point, it's just from the 13th 
through Giving Tuesday. Um, stay tuned for any announcements for that. Sometimes we have promotions for end of year, but that stuff is not set in stone yet. So at this point, just count on having fees waived from the 13th through the 27th, through the end of the Giving Tuesday event. All right, so there's a couple of questions about the fees. Um, guys, if you have, um, if you need to sort of see this written out, because I know that often helps me, is to actually see it written out. If you go to the FAQ on the Giving Tuesday site, you can see the exact terms of the waived fee promotion and when it begins and ends. So you can just take a look there. Um, let's see. Okay, so there's a question about the custom donation page, which is a premium feature that everybody who's registered has access to. It says allow or disallow public access to your page. What does that mean? Um, so basically, are you planning on using your custom donation page or not? So the custom donation page is basically if you think of what our widget is, which is the little thing that you can embed on your website where you can make a donation through Mighty Cause, the custom donation page is like that except it's an entire page so you can go through the process you can add your branding and so on and sort of if you have a donate button on your website you can have it linked to your custom donation page that is a free preview of one of our premium features that's a premium plus and premium pro feature um, so if you're planning on using the custom donation page if you want to embed it in a donate button on your website you can um, you, you would want to make sure that it is allowable to the public you want to make sure that the public can see it but if you don't want people to see it you can turn that off so that if you're not planning on using it no one can access it um, so i hope that makes sense but if you're planning on using it allow public access to your page if not then keep it disallowed okay so can volunteers make their own mighty cause campaigns and link them to your org's main giving tuesday page Yes, and that's an awesome thing if you're able to get volunteers to do that. What they would want to do is just go to your Mighty Cause page and click the button that says Fundraise. Um, we have a fundraiser wizard that will walk them through setting up their fundraiser for your organization. If they are on your page, when they click Fundraise, that it will automatically be linked to your nonprofits page and it will be included in your totals for the day. So um, all of the donations that are made to their page will count toward your totals they will help you win prizes they could be um, they could help you win a golden ticket for instance um, so yeah th they can definitely do that we encourage it peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a great way to increase your reach on giving tuesday um, so have them go to your page just click that fundraise button and then go through the few steps they have to to get their page published um, and a lot of things um, that a lot of orgs get really creative. Sometimes they'll have like a giveaway for you know the first two or three people to set up a fundraiser for them. I've seen that, or offer you know like a bumper sticker or a T-shirt or some other piece of swag to anybody who wants to fundraise for them. So if peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is something you want to try out this Giving Tuesday, it's definitely worth doing um, if you have time. But that kind of empowers the people who support you to fundraise on your behalf. So that can be actually a really great way, especially if you're doing this kind of last minute, to empower people to fundraise for you so that you just have to get your Mighty Cause page set up and then they can fundraise and help you raise money on Giving Tuesday. So you can use social media or email to say, hey, did you know that you can set up a page for us on Mighty Cause and help us raise money on Giving Tuesday? And then just give them those instructions. Here's a link to our page, click fundraise, and then fill it out. That's all, that's all they have to do. So yes, you can definitely utilize that. Um, and we have lots of information in our support library about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So that's at um, blog.mightycause.com dot com slash support and you can also just access it on the mighty cost footer um, but yeah definitely if you can incorporate peer-to-peer -peer fundraising that's a great way to increase your reach all right so sorry we have a lot of questions if anybody needs to sign off you can feel free to do so but i want to make sure that we have time to answer everybody's questions um, is it possible to include donations made to us by check on giving tuesday Yes and no. Um, so what you can do is any donations that come to you via check or cash, um, you can add them as offline donations. Um, so what that will do is it will add that to your totals on your Mighty Cause page. However, 
the caveat there is that they don't count toward, toward your leaderboard totals and we can't award prizes based on offline donations. And basically the reason being is that they're just for display purposes and we can't verify those donations. So for instance, in a power hour, that creates a situation where somebody could enter in like a $50,000 check, win the power hour and win extra cash and that's not fair. So we only include um, donations that are verified through our system in leaderboards and in prizes. So you can definitely add it so that every donation you receive is reflected in your totals on your page but they are not counting for leaderboards and for prizes. So I hope that makes sense, um, but that's kind of the situation with all giving days on Mighty Cause is that we only calculate prizes and leaderboards based on online donations. But certainly if you wanna get that donor's contribution included in your totals, you can go to donations. And then at the bottom of your donations report, there's a button that says add offline donation and that will allow you to add the offline donation that you received. <coughs> Excuse me. Is there a minimum donation amount? Yes, so the, the platform minimum is $5. And that's really just because um, with credit, credit card processing fees at a certain point when a, a small donation is made, um, you end up kind of losing money once you deduct those fees. So $5 is the minimum. Um, so unfortunately you can't have like a $1 donation, but you can, the minimum you can do is $5 on our platform. So that can be a great way if it's a power hour that's for the most donors. Um, you can just let people know like, hey, if you have five bucks, come to our page and make a donation for five bucks. And that will help you get more of the do donor volume that we're looking for during those um, power hours where we're looking for the most unique donors. So definitely you can use that as a tool. $5 is the minimum. It's really not a lot of money. Um, so definitely let people know that those $5 donations count and during certain hours they count even more and can help you win prizes. Okay, so question about Teams. If you do a Teams page for Giving Tuesday, it still goes towards your Giving Tuesday total and prizes. Yes. So if you have any page that's connected to your nonprofit, um, and you'll be able to see that on the page because it'll say a nonprofit, a, fundra a nonprofit fundraiser for your organization or a team benefiting your organization, um, it will be added to your totals. Basically, all of the ancillary pages that you may have, like teams or peer-to-peer -peer pages, are funneled to your organization profile and that's where you can see that's why you can see all of those donations in your totals so yes they count toward leaderboards yes they count toward prizes and yes they count toward your totals um, so anything that's connected um, to your nonprofit will count for giving tuesday and also have the giving tuesday pricing applied to it um so eft um so okay, so we do we do used to work with Stripe for personal fundraisers. We don't offer that for nonprofits. So if you want to set up EFT, you would have to. Uh, we do it directly so that there's no additional fees that apply. Um, we just need your your account number and your routing number, and then just some documentation to verify that that information is correct because it's really easy to put in you know, an account number that is one digit off and then the money gets trapped. Um, so EFT is the best option, it's the easiest option, and at this point that's what we offer for direct deposit. Um, we do have um, WePay as a processor for personal fundraisers, um, but I don't believe that's available for nonprofits at this point. Um, okay, somebody's just asking to repeat the organizations I mentioned. Um, the first one I mentioned is Homeward Trails. That's H-O-M-E-W-A-R-D, Trails. They're an animal rescue and their page looks awesome. Um, and the other one is Capital Area Food Bank. They're a DC-based um, nonprofit. They're a you know hunger organization and they have a really nicely filled out Mighty Cause page. So those are two that you can check out if you just kind of want to see what a page looks like when it's been completely filled out. Okay, what is the difference between peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and team fundraising? Um, so a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser can be one person. So if I decide I, you know, I'm a parent at your school and I want to raise money for you on Giving Tuesday, um, I can create a peer-to-peer -peer page. And the name peer-to-peer -peer comes from 
I'm asking my peers to donate to your nonprofit. So I'm going to my social network, going to my friends, my family, my colleagues, and I'm saying, hey, my kid goes to the school and I love it and please support them on Giving Tuesday because they've done so much for my, my child's education. So that is what a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser is. A peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser can be one person. A team is an organized peer-to-peer -peer campaign. So a team is multiple peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. And the team page is just where you can organize them and you can view them all at once. So that's really the difference is a peer-to-peer -peer page can be an individual. A team is multiple people doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for your nonprofit. Okay, so um, a question about um, foreign credit cards in foreign countries are only within the US. Um, so yes, you can. You just need to choose your country on the address collection page um, and make sure that you're choosing the correct country. If you have you know, a zip code that's international, make sure there's no dashes or spaces in it. Um, just as a note, we are a US-based platform. So um, just, keep in mind the exchange rate. So if you have a donor who's in the UK or Canada or wherever, just make sure that they know that these donations are in US dollars. We don't do that math for them. So they'll just need to figure out how much they want to donate based on the exchange rate. Um, and if you have any, if your donor has any questions or if you have any questions about international donors, you can always reach out to us at support at mightycause.com. All right, that was a lot of questions, guys. Um, I think that's everything, but if you have any um, follow-up questions or if you wanted to chat about your campaign, you can always reach out to me at lynda at mightycause.com. Um, our support staff is also available to you, so if you have any questions about using your page or any of the tools on your page, you can reach out to them at support at mightycause.com. Um, so make sure to get your handouts before you leave the webinar, but I will send them in the email that you all get that will also have the slide, slide deck and the recording. Um, so I think that's it for today, guys. Good luck with your Giving Tuesday campaigns. It's going to be an exciting day. Donations open up on Tuesday. Um, and again, we're here to support you. We're here to help you. So if you have any questions, just reach out to me or reach out to our support staff. Thanks so much for your time and for all of your great questions.